Jotform has been used in countless ways to positively impact communities over the years, but sometimes a specific use case stands out, not just because of the role Jotform plays in it, but because the user behind it has such a powerful story. Today, we'll be sharing one of those stories about how Jotform Enterprise has helped Ayub Ajmi, founder of Civilaw.tech, bridge the justice gap and help disadvantaged victims seek protection. Welcome to Momentum, a podcast by Jotform, where we talk about the technology, productivity tips, insights, and and best practices that help us move forward in business and in life. Let's get started. Three, two, one. We have a Maintaining momentum. All right, so I am here with Ayub Ajmi, who, like I mentioned, is the founder of Civilaw.tech. And in just a moment, we're going to dive into what that is and why it's so important. Uh, but first, Ayub, uh, I just want to welcome you to the show. Do you want to maybe introduce yourself and what your current role is right now? I think you may have the longest title of anyone we've had in the show, so I don't want to mess that up. <laughs> No, that's fine. Well, thank you. First, thank you for having me. Uh, this is a really great pleasure to be with you and, and the audience. Uh, so my name is Ayub Ajmi. I'm located in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm uh, the founder of Civilaw.tech. It's a consulting firm. Uh, I provide services to legal uh, legal tech services to organizations, courts, uh, legal aid services, things like that. My goal is to help people have meaningful impact on people's lives. Uh, in addition to being the founder of Civil Law Tech, I'm also, I also serve as the associate director of the law library at the University of Missouri in Kansas City, and this is uh, dear to my uh, heart as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you have a lot going for you, obviously. Uh, first, it's just, it's really great to have you. Uh, I think there's a lot of important material that we can cover here today. Uh, so I figure we should, we should dive, you know, right in. Uh, obviously, you're an avid Jotform enterprise user. And recently, we've been able to publish uh, an awesome case study about how you use Jotform to, to really bridge the justice gap and leverage technology to even the playing field for disadvantaged victims needing court protection, as you kind of mentioned. Uh, and we'll get to that. But I think even before we get to that story, uh, I know that you have a pretty inspiring backstory yourself. And I think that would be great for people to hear. So do you want to maybe start there and just talk a little bit about your journey up to this point and how you ended up to where you are now? Sure. I mean, uh, everything I'm doing right now is I, I always tell is pure chance and, and meeting good people all the way. Uh, so my background is technology. So my l degree and I have a master's in library science degree. And when I finished my background, because I had this background in technology, it gives me an edge over over the competition, basically. So I received uh, multiple offers to work on as a librarian in, uh, combining technology and librarianship and work working in the law library was pure chance. So I had no experience in law. I have never dealt with law in the U.S. I'm originally from Morocco, so I moved to the U.S. in 2017 after I won a green card lottery. So a lot of people don't know that. So I'm, I'm a lucky winner of a green card lottery. So it's literally a, a lottery. You aren't being it's, metaphorical, but an actual <laughs> lottery. Oh, actually, it's, it is a lottery. Wow. It's a diversity program in, that the, the State Department conducts every year. And the, the idea is to bring diversity to the U.S., which I think is a wonderful thing. And literally, you put your name and date of birth, and if you're lucky, somebody will call you. And after that, then there is another, of course, immigration process, background check, and things like that. But it, it's pure luck. So wow. this is how I came here, and this is how I started. So everything I was doing is, you know, okay, let's try and see what's what I can do here. And then uh, my technology background goes back to when I was in Morocco. I had my own uh, consulting firm there and I was already working in designing websites and things like that. So uh, being a librarian was pure transition for me because I always tell people I was librarian before I knew that the librarian degree existed. So, mm -hmm. so I did the library degree and I started working in law school. And then uh, I started learning more about things that I could do with, with a law uh, in law and technology. Was it always a dream of yours to come to the United States? Was that just sort of a lucky happenstance or, or did you always want to end up here? I had, this is the truth. I had no dream. I had no plans. Uh, 
let me tell you the full story. So yeah. like I said, I had a business in Morocco. So at that time in 2006, 2007, the US department changed the process of the green card lottery. And it used to be paper-based process. So it switched to becoming online. So basically you have to go to a website and take uh, digital pictures and upload it. That's how you start the process. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time in Morocco, Internet was not predominant as it is now. And a lot of people didn't have a way to do that. So I start offering that service for a fee. So I had a business where people will mm. come to me. I will take a picture of them, do some Photoshop editing and make sure it's the size that is needed and submit the petition <laughs> for them online. And mine was a test. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So you, so you definitely, <laughs> definitely had some background in this and, uh, it seems like that obviously transitioned very well, uh, when you did get an opportunity to come to the United States, it sounds like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so what inspired you to end up taking up law? Uh, so when I started working in the law library at UMKC, so I quickly learned that the technology can be a game changer in the field. So the legal practice is one of the most resistant uh, to change out there. So mm -hmm. honestly, if it was not for COVID-19, we will still be talking about whether we, can, we should use the cloud to save files or use a file cabinet. Hmm. This is how resistant to change it was. So it's amazing to see how things has been moving in the, in the last uh, two years and witnessing that change. It's really amazing and inspiring. So when I started working in the library, my title is digital librarian, basically. So I provide services to faculty and students, help them use technology in learning and teaching and all of that. So I started learning more about the classes that we offer. One of the class that we offer is an interdisciplinary class where we have students from multiple practices. They could be MBA students, they work with the JD students and computer science students, all in the same class, and they will work on real life projects. Mm -hmm. Those projects usually are in the intersection of law, technology, public policy, urbanism, th things like that, that usually the city will need or some local organizations will need. And I started getting involved in those classes. So, uh, for example, we had, I remember we had a group that they were working in creating a founder's term sheet for startup. Uh, we have another group, they work in the streamlining the process of expungement. And so they do research, they do things like that. So this is how we start learning. The common thing with those projects was technology. Uh, yes, you need to have an expertise in law, you need to have expertise in business, but technology was a key element to making those projects successful. So that's where really a bulb light on me, and just that's why I knew that, okay, really combining law and technology, I can really do some damages. So it will be really interesting to, to explore that. So this is how literally I got involved. But, but the other things also is, um, so in the law school, we have clinics, which it's basically uh, like a experiential learning where students get to do some real work with real cases. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have child and family clinic where we help people with family law matters. We also have a self what we call a self-help clinic. And it is our situation is unique because it is located in the library, which I manage. So this self-help clinic, we provide a limited scope representation to people in the community. A limited scope representation means that you get to meet, as the user, you get to meet an attorney, and that attorney will give you legal advice for the duration of the meeting. After the meeting, you take whatever information or paper they help you produce, and you represent yourself in the court. Okay, so this this clinic is a partnership between UMKC and Legal Aid of Western Missouri. Uh, so we do we don't have any advertising we don't have mm -hmm. any signage we don't have anything and within a few weeks we were booked like three months in advance hmm. it's it's uh, the need it's it's really so big that it's it's really disturbing it must um, have been very eye-opening so 80 percent of people who go to court for family matters are unrepresented so that means like someone who is in divorce or a child support situation, they go to court and maybe the other party has a lawyer, 
and they don't have a lawyer. And you can guess what the results are going to be. Right. So 80 percent of people who go for family law matters don't have uh, representation. The other thing is we have legal aid services everywhere. They provide they help people with low income. They give them legal advice. What well, the problem is, the need is so big that first you have to qualify. So there are some income limitations and not everyone can match those income limitations. And then even if you are poor enough to get your file, more than 50 percent of people end up not getting the help they, they are need. They get little to no help mm -hmm. because there is so many, so many demands. So for me, this is the thing that really inspires me is uh, everything I do. I am not taking a job from someone else. Mm -hmm. There is plenty of job out there. What we need is to use tools like technology, like judge form and things like that, so we can do bigger impact, not just helping case by case, for example. Uh, I'll give you an example of um, uh, expungement, for example, clearing criminal records. So a lot of states now are, are, are looking into that, especially now where the, um, it is hard to find uh, employees because a lot of employees has criminal records and you can't hire them. Well, a lot of states now are in the process of automating the expungement, which means like they can literally uh, clear the records of millions of people with one click. Mm -hmm. So those are things like technology now can make happen quickly and efficiently. And the results are amazing because it, taking cases one by one, it will take us years and years to help those people. So the, the solution is mass solutions like this. So things like where you take a bulk of people and you can give all the tools you have available. So the courts can have advocates to help people. Legal aid can help. And, and automation and self-help tools, everything we can to help those people. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot to, to take in. And I think if you, t to your point, the way that technology has kind of empowered this process, what, what would the process be like without technology? Like what would, what would the old fashioned paper trail process be to well, help these people? Well, the, the old process, which is not really, unfortunately, it's not really old. It's this is the most common process now. Is everything is paper based? Mm -hmm. Still. So, and even even when, uh, uh, like, I will talk to someone and they say, "Well, we have petitions in a PDF, fillable PDF." It's not really enough mm -hmm. because it's uh, the problem is those PDF petitions are pure legalese. You have to be a lawyer to understand what they mean. I right. mean, there are people who struggle with who is the plaintiff, who is the defendant, for example. Right. So those are, if you are uh, educated and familiar with the system, you might understand those terminologies. But a lot of people don't understand those terminologies. And they and, have to fill out the, the paperwork the, themselves. So they, yes. they have to know. And then, absolutely. And then thing is, if you don't fill out the right paper, you get penalized. And then if you really? uh, if you miss something, you get penalized. And if you don't get penalized, at least you're going to get delayed. The relief is going to be delayed for days or if, if not weeks. So that's what's going on now. The process is really not working. The process is broken. And the other thing is, like for an example of the expungement, we're talking about years to if you want to do those case by cases. For example, mm. Pennsylvania, for example, they had they cleared millions of criminal records of people with drug offenses. California did that. A mm -hmm. lot of states did that. So there's a lot of people who qualify. They don't really need to know. And the court know they can just do that in one click. Of course, it's not that easy as that because data is not organized and you need systems. But there are ways to do that. Sure. It's not impossible. Sure. And it's it's empowered by by technology, as as you mentioned. And obviously, you said that that law takes a long time, the, the entire industry to uh, adapt to change. Um, and it, so, is. it is. It is. <laughs> uh, so it sounds like this is a broader issue and a broader movement that in some ways you're you're spearheading a little bit. To, to your knowledge, are there other institutions out there who are kind of trying to do the same thing that you are, but may just haven't made it big yet? 
Oh, I mean, absolutely. I'm not really the leader here. I'm just following other leaders before me. I'm trying to target target things from different perspectives. Sometimes, uh, for example, there are a lot of organizations. I can give you an example. For example, Code for America. They are based in California. They do this work mm-hmm. on helping courts into streamlining the process of uh, expungement and other 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 things. There are organizations. They work in the bankruptcy, which they uh, provide uh, uh, a way for for some one to do bankruptcy petitions online so there is plenty of of this is actually the good thing this is not uh there is a lot of people who are helping like faculty they teach students how to code how to understand Mm -hmm. and how to use those tools uh a lot of lawyers who do pro bono work for free trying to help and and do that there is a lot of clinics all the law schools i know have clinics to help uh low income individuals and people in so many areas of the law so this is the good thing this is not unique there is a lot of people who are helping the the only thing is there is so much need that it's Mm -hmm. like <laughs> it, it, we are not really making a lot of uh, uh, change because because unfortunately it's huge. I mean, uh, there is a lot of people with with the criminal records or with need right. to uh, legal need and all of that stuff. I mean, think about evictions and just the recent stuff recently due to COVID and all of that. There is there is a lot of that. Definitely. No, I mean, to to your point, even the more institutions that are getting equipped with technological prowess to sort of uh, escalate these these processes to help these people to get those expungements even the more that get uh the technology to do that there are still more that need the expungements and the the need grows as the solution grows so you almost need some like mass shift almost uh in a very real and significant way but it's good that change is at least started and it's happening and people are aware um and I guess it's I guess it's the baby steps at the end of the day, right? This is a, this is an excellent point. So uh, a lot of the, the the project we are working on, the impact will be much bigger if it's driven by the institutions rather than private providers right. of services. If the process is provided by the court, it will has more impact and people will use it even more. So right. that's literally, that's where I work basically. My, all of my work is creating self-help tools that, uh, that are free to the users because you know, if you need a petition, it's your right to have access to the petition. So the courts will provide that service for them, and 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 the courts. It's not like yes, they can they're gonna spend some money to do that, but they're gonna if we think of it from the economic perspective, they're gonna save more money because this is less time that a clerk in a court will have to spend just explaining to people which form they use. This is less uh, right. uh, time that the judge will spend trying to figure out what they're trying to say. It helps it's everyone. It's all good. I mean, it helps everybody. That's the truth. It helps everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's let, let's rewind just a, a, a little bit and actually talk about how this, uh, how this started happening, at least for you. So you came to America in, in 2017, you said? <clears throat> Uh, 2007 Two, 2007 sorry it's, and and then yeah, you were well, you were working years. in the uh you're working in the library and sort of by happenstance you uh you know discovered this need um and cultivated this interest uh what mm-hmm. what sort of inspired you to take that step to actually found civilaw.tech and now uh ks pop kansas protection order portal um obviously those are those are larger initiatives and at some point the seed had to be planted and then you had to go about actually starting that getting resources for that uh so can you talk me a little bit through that process sure so like i said i get to do a lot of good things through my work at the university Mm -hmm. however the main goal of the university is teaching so we uh is teaching and, and providing students with experiential experiential learning opportunities. That's the main goal. Right. Uh, so in order to, to have an impact, and, and really this is what I want to do, is to be more efficient, you, I had to have an entity. So I had to have an entity, so in order for me to enter into a contract with organization, in order for me to get some resources and, and, and get to help. So that's where I saw the need of, I, I will better work if through uh, a business entity that way i'm not creating any issues for my other uh, uh, position and they get to help more people doing it that way so ks pop the kansas uh, uh, protection order portal it's one of many projects 
or several projects I have been fortunate enough to to take on. Uh, the case pop, it's not my portal. It's owned by the court. Okay. That's the good thing because it's the court really, they were really uh, forward looking into uh, going ahead and creating this portal and creating this self-help portal. And not many courts have self-help portals or at least not many courts have dedicated space in the pro- in the protection order uh, um, specific area so uh, i helped the court design and implement and i'm actually supporting the portal in in entering uh, second year now uh, so this is how how i started this project like i said i had other projects but this is maybe the most rewarding one for me so uh, in for uh, people who are uh, watching and listening the kansas protection uh, portal it's an online platform so where victims of abuse and domestic violence or or, uh, sexual harassment, sexual violence, child trafficking uh, can seek help remotely mm-hmm. without having to go to court. So y- you, uh, the, uh, the, the, the portal, the way it is designed, we are not just generating petitions, generating petitions in one aspect of what is provided. But the, the other things we provide is we provide education. We educate people th- so they know what rights they have, what relief they can have. This is this is very uh traumatic situations for them and sometimes uh, it's when you think about it i mean if if you are if you have not been in that situation the first reaction people say well do the order and get away from that situation it's not really not that, that easy for people yeah. who are or that simple for people who are in it because where are you gonna go who's gonna feed you who's gonna feed your your children there's a lot of yeah. questions there's a power and dynamic there is, at play there is, normally Oh, absolutely. And there is a risk. I mean, there, there, there are cases where people who try to escape violence, they have been unfortunately killed. Right. So there is a lot of things going on. We are not just making it easy for people to seek help, but we are making sure that when they file a petition, they know that this is the right petition. So we connect them with advocates in their area. They are victim advocates who can help you find shelter, who can create an emergency protocol for you so that when you are ready to leave, you know where you're going to go. You know where your kid's going to go. You know how to protect your identity. Like, for example, a lot of victims are being monitored. They are physically monitored by Bluetooth devices or monitored mm-hmm. by email or by phone. So uh, we educate them and give them all those things that they need to know and connect them with people who can provide with that help. And then at the end, when they are ready, then we help them file the, uh, file the petitions. And we do that in two steps. And this is really where JotForms comes in. And this is why I, I like uh, working with JotForm. Uh, when we were working on this project, uh, and, and to go back, we started thinking about the project before COVID-19. And then the COVID-19 hit, and then it became the urgency. Mm-hmm. And then we had to do something because courts were limited access to courts, and there's a lot of restrictions. People could not leave their homes and things like that. So the project became urgent. So before we start working on developing the, the, the system, we we ask the clerks, we ask people who work with the victims, we ask other organizations of what were the, the issues they have. The bigger issue is, like I told you earlier, is to figure out what petition to file. So like in Kansas, for example, and this is the case in most cases, in most states, uh, in Kansas, there are two types of petitions. It's a PFS, which is Protection from Sexual Assault, Harassment and Child Trafficking, or a PFA, which is Protection from Abuse. Uh, they They provide similar relief, but the qualifications are different. Uh, so, and like I said, if you file the wrong petition, uh, there is a risk that you, your request will be denied and you will be asked mm. to file the right paper. Mm. And then in addition to the petition itself, there are other forms that you need to fill out. And if you are not in the field, there is no way you can, you know that. And we did some experiments in school, like my colleague uh, asked her students, and those are law students who are in second or third year. And she gave them, she showed them the website and she told them, can you guess which petition you need for this situation? And most of them couldn't couldn't answer. Huh, so, for really? example, if if you have if you have children, and you are seeking relief just for yourself, 
you may think like you don't need the petition that has the children information because you say, well, I don't have my children don't have any issue with the abuser. I'm the one who is being abused, not my children. Well, but still, you have to have uh, the the judge needs to know all you, the name of your children, the relationship, mm. and just to make sure that there is no uh, divorce uh, procedures uh, pending or something yeah. like that. So there is uh, small nuances like this. So using judge form, what we created, we created what we call an eligibility test, and those are few questions that we ask the individual, and based on their answer, we can tell if they qualify. What petition they qualify for, and if they don't qualify, what other relief they can they can have access to. Uh, so before we did this with the portal, uh, you will take uh, victims sometimes the entire day to fill out th those packets, and I'm talking about thirty to forty pages of information that you have to fill out. Uh, when we did the judge form petition. Uh, it took an average two minutes and 30 seconds wow. to know what petition you need to file and to know if you are eligible. And then from there, you can start. Uh, we use plain language. We use simple instructions. We ask you questions only once. And then all that information is built in, in the logic in judge form. And then we don't people don't see that. It's all in the background. And we have all those, those conditions uh, working as you fill out the form. And then at the end, we generate the packet the entire 40 pages of information filled out for you and ready to be filed with the court and it takes an average 30 minutes wow. this is this is how it's literally life changing for people because you know a lot of people just don't do it because it takes so much time Sure, sure. Now, it, it is hard to understate the significance of, of all of this. And thank you for, for providing all that context, because to your point, a lot of these individuals are in positions of extreme duress, whether uh, at, at home or with a partner or, or something like that. And they probably they just don't have even the time to probably get away to do this paperwork on their own. Or like you said, they're being monitored or they, they feel unsafe. So it's Awesome to have set up a, a process and a system that they can turn to, and, it, and it's amazing that that Jot form has been able to to help with that. Um, but even the uh, the idea behind it is just so important in the lives that it that it impacts. Uh, yeah, these are uh, really cool use cases for for Jot form. This is probably the coolest one that I've ever um, heard of personally, and I think it's it's really amazing that it's being able to be yeah. be used in this way. Um, <clears throat> I mean, this is really, uh, it's really, like I said, it's really cool that we were able to do it using judge form. Uh, in the, in the 12 months, uh, the first 12 months, we had all, more than 18,000 eligibility review completed and wow. more than 6,000 petitions were filed. So I, I want to take a moment. Those are not just numbers. Those are real victims. I wish there were zero petition filed, right. uh, but the reality is, uh, the thing that makes me really proud is at least those who who needed to file a petition we we had a solution for them and the people who are in in uh, in a lockdown or 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 are afraid to leave their house they can file a petition from their smartphone Absolutely. so using the judge form petition so it's it's really those for me the key the things i i look at yes it is hard to break in but at least there is there is there is a help there is a way to help those people you know that's that's amazing, Ayub. And again, for for setting up the system and having and having these considerations again for these people in in duress, and e even something as small as you said, like being able to do it on their phone. Like often they might not have access to uh, a laptop, much less be able to go that's somewhere cool. and fill out yeah. paperwork. Or you know, d depending on how closely uh, monitored they are. And so many parts of the system are so kind of pedantic uh, and nuanced. Like I said, knowing which goes with what situation. Uh, which petition you need to fill out? Um, just being able to give them those resources is is so important. Yeah, I think I was I was. So, oh, please go ahead. Uh, I mean, uh, just to add one more thing, I think it's very really important. Uh, we don't have uh, direct stories from people because those are victims, and we don't want to uh, have a survey. Of course, uh, basically. So, but we have through through the victims and through people who work with them, we hear those stories. And one of them, I was told. Uh, the police uh, the officers in in many cities now they have the the, the judge for petition already on their phone, <laughs> so that when they go to calls with uh, with for violence, they are ready to 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 show people if they want to go ahead and sit down and fill out the petitions. 
in from the phone literally i mean it's yeah. it's really i mean it's small things but it makes a lot of difference it's it, it's so important and then yeah just being able to fill out a simple basically a questionnaire and have the petition decided for you and get, getting to take out all that guesswork for them is is so important i think i i remember seeing i i, I think it was ks pop uh when I, I i just looked up the website and I think there is there a button on there that you can like exit out and the whole point is that you can exit out quickly just in case you feel like you're being monitored or you're unsafe or there there is some like security measure built in for that yes. that situation. Yeah. Can, can you elaborate so a little bit are, more on that? Yeah. Security is one of the I mean is the biggest things we have to deal with because those are people who are abused there is a chance of being monitored there is all those literally their life is right. in danger once uh, the period uh, the period when you file your petition until you get the protection order is the most dangerous uh, time for victims of violence mm. so it's we are very careful about that specific time so we built in a lot of tools in in the judge form forms and in the website where there is an escape button which escape redirects button. you to to an, another website basically whether or something random like this uh, uh, to help you but the other things also is uh, we're not tracking people where we don't keep their uh, information in the system for more than the durations that we needed. And those are all built in tools in the system. We don't cache their information. It's just a lot of things that we were able to do so that we limit that uh, exposure for their personal information, just in case someone is watching what they are doing or either on a phone or, or computer at home or somewhere else. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And again, you can't can't understate the significance of that and even the peace of mind that they would have filling out the form, knowing that they have an escape button uh, just one click away probably uh, makes them feel more confident in actually going through with it um, and, you know, be able to come back later and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um yeah, like I said, really, really impactful, powerful, powerful stuff. Um, I guess I'm, I'm kind of curious to wind it back now. Like, uh, it's obviously awesome that you were able to use Jotform for this uh, use case. But how, how did that come about? Like, how did you first find out about Jotform? What gave you the idea to start using it for for this purpose? And what what made it the right the right fit for this very important uh, use case? So. Uh I'm a user of Jotform since the beginning. So I still have my original account with multiple users that has been grandfathered. Okay, so nice. I'm keeping that account. So I have been using Jotform maybe since 2007 or 2008. So at that time, I was designing websites. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my clients will ask for contact form. Well, it was really hard to have to build the contact form in the PHP or some other language and uh, right. let alone make something beautiful as what you can do with, with Jotform so easily. So uh, this is my first introduction is, okay, I'm going to use this tool to create contact for people, uh, contact form for for my client's website. And, uh, and literally, this is how I start using Jotform. And, uh, but the good thing with Jotform is that every month or so, there is something new. And then mm -hmm. now I can do attachments. Well, now I can do a voice recording. Every time, I just, like every time a client will ask me and they say, well, we need to do this, but it's not, this feature is not available. My answer is always, well, just wait. I'm pretty sure someone is already working on it. <laughs> Probably <laughs> and, true. And it, had, and it happened like recently with the, um, with the 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 process for collecting uh, signatures mm -hmm. which is which is pretty cool like it's really good timing and i knew it's gonna come <laughs> uh we use it like in the in the law school in our clinics we use that feature a lot because most of our clinics now are remote and we need before we can start uh, working with people we need them to sign documents uh so we we, we used to pay you know per signature which for me was crazy but there is no yeah. other options right. we had to do it and then and now we have job form, which is <laughs> included in our subscription and then it's all in there in one place you can we have the like for the self-help clinic i told you about we have an intake form mm -hmm. and then at the end of the intake form there is a signature field and then you get the form right away you get the copy of the signature we get the copy of the, the signature and we are done uh, the other thing is uh, um, retention 
So like I said, the, the portal we created, and this is true on all our uh, uh, services we provide, we don't collect information unless we have to. And then if we collect sensitive information, we have to have a policy on how long we're going to keep it. Uh, for example, for protection orders, and this is for Kansas, uh, uh, when someone uh, filed a, uh, a petition for a protection order, uh, the court will have to provide a hearing in 21 days. So for us, this gave us an and some uh, ideas on what our policy will be. So we decided counting weekends and things like that, our policy will be 30 days. We mm -hmm. are not going to keep information. The server is secure. This is this is a dedicated server, of course. This is just right, from enterprise. From enterprise yeah. it's, it's very secure and everything. But at the same time, we don't. We just don't want liability, and of we course. don't want to keep that information that we don't need. So we have now. It's built in in Jotform. Uh, so in the past, we used to use the API call to delete those petitions after thirty days. Well, we don't have to do it anymore because we just go to Jotform. We go to the setting. We go to the form and say delete petition, delete submissions right. after thirty the, days. The auto delete done. feature, right? <laughs> so it's just amazing. Uh, so this is really how I, I use Jotform. Is every time I find. I mean. I have some a lot of stories. I don't know how much time you have. All the time we have in the world. The child but... <laughs> <and family. laughs> we have the child and family clinic. Uh, and then we, we have a trivia night, which is an event every year where we, we do uh, trivia games and we collect donations to, to help the children and the clinic. So to help to get the children to help the clinic and the families. Mm -hmm. Well, when COVID hit, we couldn't do the, the trivia in the hotel and outside like we used to and they, they were about to cancel that year uh, trivia event and i told them give me a day or two let me see what i can do and believe it or not we use jotform <laughs> so we use jotform to create oh, games great. and it was so amazing we have drag and drop games we have all sorts of games like multiple choice it's literally like a quiz in in a funny way and yeah. it, people loved it so we, a combination awesome. of zoom and jot form we saved the day so <laughs> we 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 had a lot of donations and everybody was happy and now is this is this, we just did the second one so even now that we are open people are probably going to stick with the <laughs> virtual one <laughs> i love to hear it i love to hear it no that's uh, that, that's an incredible report i think it, it does lend lend credence to the fact that you know probably a lot of people use use jot form for maybe the obviously the the data collection the simple the contact form the intake forms um but in a situation like yours with you know ks pop where there's a lot of legal nuance behind what you do and there has to be that layer of of security and protection and peace of mind both for yourself uh from a legal perspective from the institutions you represent and from the the victims um being able to to have these measures in place like the auto delete feature or, and things like that are, are really important to enabling uh, what you do. Um, and it is cool to see sort of how we've been able to, to help accommodate uh, those things, because ultimately this is why we do it, to help people like yourself and help all the people that you are helping. So it is, like I said, a powerful story, and, and I'm grateful that you are uh, able to share it today. Um, I'm just kind of curious, I guess, kind of broadening a little bit, like, what would you say is most rewarding about what you do? What's what's your biggest learning up to this point? Like, if you kind of have to look, look back on things, um, from winning the lottery in Morocco to get to come to the U.S. Uh, to then setting up these systems to help these thousands of people in need, like what's your what's your main takeaway from that? Yeah, I think for me, uh, this is this is I learned a lot during the process. So this is one thing I, I love. So when I started, when I decided to 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 start a civil law tech, one thing I did, which may sound crazy, which I enrolled in the JD program. So mm -hmm. I don't have a JD. I, I I'm I'm not a lawyer. So I, and I'm I'm I want to work in this field. So the best way for me is to go back to school. So I just graduated last last semester with congratulations my JD, uh, last month with thank you wow. with my JD degree and I'm working on my uh, uh, bar examination in the state of Missouri uh, in July. So wish me good luck. <laughs> you got this. So so one thing I did is I have to learn. I mean I can't just sure. just 
Yes, I mean, I have to know the issues from inside. Uh, so I took all classes, I took many clinics, I worked with people, and this is all has been a learning opportunity for me, which I love it. So this is really rewarding for me. This is a huge opportunity for the legal com community to step up and, and do what they are meant to do, which is basically help people. Uh, tools like JotForm and other tools are available to their service. They can use it by using those tools. They can save time by saving times they can charge affordable prices because nobody can afford the lawyer. Mm -hmm. It's it's just as simple as that. Uh, so I, I try to help in that aspect as well. I teach a legal technology class where I help students understand what technologies are available and how you can use them in practice and, you know, what's out there. You know, I know those are, are in law school to be lawyers, but uh, they don't have to be programmers. But I think it's very helpful when you know what's out there and what tools you can use to to learn and make you a good lawyer uh, and also teach uh, lawyers in uh, like give them uh, uh, what we call CLE, continual legal education programs and always try to bring in new tools, what is out there like, you know, I have a, a commitment next week where I will be teaching lawyers on no code and low code solutions mm -hmm. using JotForm and adult tools among others and this is I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a huge change which I'm really excited about because Anybody now can really create a petition generator or or things right. like that. So I think those are the awarding things for me. The other thing is companies too, like uh, technology companies, like Jotform and other companies. They can they can. Uh, this is a good space to invest in. Uh, there is a lot of resources, and and they can develop. For example, Jotform already has a bunch of resources for that aspect. But I don't think there is something specific for law. For example, uh, a lot of law firms and and organization they use programs to generate a contract and to generate uh, simple things like what i do basically with with smart pdf uh, but maybe the companies can invest more in that aspect to make them uh, more specific to the legal field in a way where for example now george form you can create a, a, e-shop in, in in seconds or you can create an intake form an appointment in seconds so companies can probably start looking at that aspect specific to to the legal field in the same way they looked at the aspect specific sure. to health uh, crisis during during the covid crisis i think those are opportunities that i'm really excited about and i'm looking forward to see more uh, investments and more resources done in that because at the end there is a huge need and like i said at the beginning i mean we are not taking nobody's job there is plenty of job for everyone right. and and basically that's basically what i think about yeah absolutely it's it, it feels like an untapped market untapped opportunity to help thousands and thousands of people people out there uh what would you say is is next for for you like on a personal level like obviously you're taking the bar exam uh, uh, you're going to become a professional in law as it is. Uh, and then at, at this point, how much of your time is dedicated to civilaw.tech and KS pop versus you know, still b working at the university and where do you see yourself shifting? Like ultimately, where would you like to see yourself ending up in this, on this path? Yeah, I think, I think for me, uh, the things I want to focus on is definitely a combination of teaching and and creating uh, right. uh, tools like this. This is, has been my case since the beginning. Every time I'm doing a presentation or I'm teaching someone, I can't just teach from theory. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to tell you uh, how does it feel to jump from an airplane and uh, because I have never done it. I can't tell you that, but I can tell you how to build the system and how to make it secure sure. and how to help people because I have done it and I have some experience in that. I have some failures. I have successes I can share with you. So that's basically my goal for me. I can't just be teaching. I can't, I have to do it in order for me to teach. So that's where it's combination of both. So my time, there is 24 hours in a day and I work 24, <laughs> 24 hours. So I don't have <laughs> to sleep sometimes, that. man. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's that's pretty much what I do. For me, uh, looking forward, like I said earlier, I want to focus on the area of self help. Uh, uh, for example, Kurds they have self help tools. Those self help tools can be updated. Those self help tools can be automated because we need all the help we can. Absolutely. Uh, the courts and advocates are available to help. 
But there are people who can't come to the court. There are people who don't want to come to the court. There are people who don't speak the language fluently. So we need to help them. And we can use technology to do that. So we, I can convert your old paper-based English only uh, legalese, full of legalese resources and convert them into friendly, multilingual uh, and plain English online resources available from smartphone. So that's what I want people to know that is possible. And that's uh, KSPOP is one example. Uh, there are other examples where we apply the same methodology and it's very successful. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think it will take for uh, the justice system at large to take this step? Like, obviously, you're doing it. Other institutions are doing it. But as we mentioned at the beginning, the, the need is still growing so much and the solutions are growing. But what will it take for the solutions to catch up with the need? Is it just consistent communication and people like yourself who are advocating and being a spokesperson for these types of solutions? Or is it some sort of larger logistical bureaucratic uh, process, like somebody in actual power in our like government or something has to actually start stepping up in this way? Like, what will it take for the solutions like this to catch up to the need, do you think? Well, I mean, one thing is we really don't need another pandemic to create online resources. Mm -hmm. So please, let's go ahead and do that. We don't need another shutdown. We don't need yep. another Agreed. issues to do that because this is not new. Right. I mean, judge form is not new. It has been around for many years. Right. Online forms are not new. Cloud services are not new. So we just used tools that already exist. In. We didn't, I did not create anything. Everything is out there, already out right. there. I just used tools that are already there. So, uh, this, the tools are there. And this is one thing I tell my client. This is not a technology problem. It's processes. It's willingness of people to do that. And sometimes it's really hard. I mean, I'm not trying to put the blame on the people who are uh, in courts and organizations or governments because it's really hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, for example, when you look at the criminal records, it's it's a lot of uh, sources. Information is stored in multiple databases. Some information is not even in databases. It's still in print. It's hard to do something with that. It's really it's it's a huge task. But the other but the thing is there is there is now we know that there is a solution. Now people are are trusting that solution. They know it's worked because we were forced to use it, and now eh, nothing bad happened. Everybody is fine. Uh, Everybody is right. happy. Like now I hear from judges. They love the petitions we send them through judge form. Guess why? Of course. Because it's not handwritten. Right. They, they, it's easy to read. It's as simple as that. So everybody lo loves it. And it's everybody very wins. Everybody wins. So for me, it's things like that that will push the system to change. Another thing is, which already start doing it, which is the, uh, the employment situation and economy situation. Well, I mean, there are people who are willing to help. If you can help them expunge their criminal records, for example, or you can give them do tools to, to do their work remotely. I mean, those are things that are, uh, I'm, I'm very confident. We are already, I have already seen so many changes like this and so many requests. And, and I'm very confident that more and more um, uh, courts and legal service providers will be utilizing uh, technology tools to streamline a lot of processes that they were still print based just recently right and it's it's wonderful that you know you're getting the word out and you are being uh an advocate i think this is great for people to hear uh and hear from you you mentioned a little bit uh earlier that that you didn't create anything everything was was already there right but i think that uh you know, through your implementation and intentionality with what you've been doing, you've created plausibly second chances and hope for, for thousands of people through the systems that, that you've set up. So I would argue that you have indeed uh, created <laughs> something. And I think that the work that you're doing is uh, immensely impactful. And it makes me um, gratified to even be able to, to talk to you about it today and obviously uh, work for a company that's helped enable it even on a, even on a small level. So um, I can understate yeah. How, well, how amazing that is. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely a teamwork, to be honest with you. this I couldn't be doing what I'm doing if it's not for the support I have at the school, mm -hmm. if it's not for my colleagues who help, and everybody. I mean, like, for example, uh, why I pick JotForm Enterprise, I could just stick with the regular account. Well, 
I love the support I get through Jotform Enterprise. I mean, this is one thing that's one of the main reason why I used it. It's, it's in, on top of the security level I have. I also have a really smart team of people that, you know, I can just email them and ask them questions. Or if there is a problem, they, they, I can mm -hmm. email them and have them jump on it and fix it. I mean, it's just team. It's a team of people who are everybody is helping for, uh, from their perspective and the things they do the best 100 percent. all all hands effort and all going uh in the right direction um and hopefully helping people people at the end of the day um Ayub, this has been just fantastic to to have you on the show and get to talk about this i think it's been really eye-opening um for for myself and and hopefully for a lot of our listeners out there um anything anything we missed or that we didn't get a chance to to cover i, I really appreciate some of the context and background you'll be able to to give to these important causes um and some of your solutions to them but but anything we we didn't cover before we step away today i think we covered everything again if anybody interested they want to learn more about the uh, services we will provide or they want to see how they can help i mean visit my website cvlaw.tech uh, to learn more about what we do and we are open to business and happy to talk to anybody Absolutely. We'll definitely be putting links to, to these resources and a couple of other ones that we mentioned uh, in the description for the YouTube video to this, at least. Uh, so I absolutely encourage people to, to check that out. It's a really amazing thing that that Ayub and um, everyone on his team and, and supporting him over there are doing. Um, and yeah, it was just incredible to get to talk to you today. And I really appreciate awesome. you lending us your time. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ayub.